when you're looking at diets and when you're looking at losing weight in general, there are three things that you need to keep in mind. And this is the reason why most people fail. What's going on, Fit Babes? It's your girl, Coach Chris. Thanks for stopping by the Body by Chris YouTube channel, where we are all about empowering fitness newbies to walk into the gym with more confidence and step into the weight room for the very first time. I'm so happy that you're here. Today is a good one because we are approaching the end of 2020. And you know what that means. New Year's resolution time. Have any of you thought about what your goals are? Like what, what you wanna do for 2021? Chances are you're here because one of the goals that you're probably gonna have for yourself is to lose weight. Yes, like every single year, weight loss is at the top of the New Year's resolution list. I'm gonna go over Weight Watchers. And I'm gonna go over it from a standpoint of someone who had my own fitness journey as well, not just a personal trainer, but I, I went through the journey. I actually did Weight Watchers a while back. And I'm gonna tell you what I've learned now that I'm a little bit more educated in my industry versus what I knew then, and whether or not this is something that's gonna work for you at the point in life that you're at. Okay, first, what I wanna do is go over what is the whole Weight Watchers thing? Because back in the day when I did it, it was just a simple point system. Now they've got all these colors and plans. And I will be honest with you, your girl got confused. I had to end up Googling because I was extremely confused on what the heck all of their colors meant. I don't know if that's something you want for someone who's completely new and has no idea. Like, do you want them to be com like completely confused? I think, it just makes things just overly complicated for no reason. But I don't know, that's just me. Three things that they do. First, they take their uh, own personal assessment for a holistic view of what impacts weight loss for you, from food to sleep to how you think. I'm guessing that's some kind of quiz or you know personalized test or something. Then they're going to scientifically ooh, match you up with a food plan. The food plan colors are green, blue, and purple. It's gonna guide you towards food choices geared for your preferences. I'm guessing like what you like to eat maybe, like what your, if you've got a sweet tooth or something, I'm not really sure what that means. And then you get an app that's gonna be personalized with trackers, fit points, tips and tricks, recipes, and different tools to make losing weight easy for you. Their entire marketing is all about making it easy for you and personalized. Sounds like those are the two things that they really focus on. Now, back when I did Weight Watchers, it was a simple point system. I believe the minimum is 23 points, and that may still be true today. And then like you have 23 points, you can use them for whatever you want in that day. It doesn't matter what you're eating, but it, you can't go over 23 points. All vegetables, and I believe fruit too, are zero points, if that's still the case with fruit but you can eat as much of that as you want for zero points. That was nice, because you could eat a lot of those in your meal and you don't have to think about them too much. I don't really understand, because I did have to Google it, but the colors, all they do is have a different balance, a different ratio of zero point foods to smart foods. That's what they call them. So something like, I think purple has a lot of zero and just a small bit of smart foods. Sounds like you're eating a very low calorie meal plan at that point. So I don't know what that looks like, but there was a calculator that I found online that like converted calories to points for Weight Watchers. My mind is blown. It showed, and tell me if this is right in the comments below, because I would really like to get a very crystal clear idea of this, but Weight Watchers says you should be at a minimum of 23 points. The calories, of 1,200, that equaled 32 points. So what is 23 points? Is that like air? I don't know about this. I, that was the first thing that caught me off guard was thinking about like how does this transfer over to calories and I just, I was a little bit stunned. So comment down below if this is not the case, um, but this is just first impression of what I got and what I understood from it. 
Now, if you look at their website and they talk about the smart points, this is similar to what they had in the past when I did it. You got a weekly allowance. That's just what they called it back then. Now it's called your weekly smart points. So you've got a few points that you can have. If you didn't eat them throughout the day, you can move them over to your bank and then you can use them like on a weekend when you go out to dinner or something like that. So you eat a little bit less throughout the week and you keep, you trickle all of those in and then have like a big meal at a restaurant on like a Saturday. I would recommend this to most people too, which isn't a big deal. The only problem is, is you will be very, very hungry throughout the week. So if you're someone who mentally and emotionally, you feel like restricting yourself causes you to downward spiral and binge, this may not be the right path for you to take because you would like to have a little more consistency throughout the week and feel full every single day. I've realized that they're basically taking the approach of macro counting, but taking out the actual knowledge of what that is and dressing it up as this cute little point system. It's kind of what they're doing. They are looking at saturated fats, protein, and sugar. They're just calling it a little bit different, honestly, because sugar is carbs. Saturated fat, I'm not sure if they're looking at unsaturated fat. I guess not because like, you look at avocados and those have fat in them, but they're not saturated fats. So they're just taking a little bit different approach, but they're kind of still following a macro counting process on the back end, on the, in the system. So if you heard someone talk about macros and flexible dieting, it's kind of the same idea. The only issue is that for people who don't under, who've never heard of macro counting and who don't really understand it, Doing this may be easier for you if you don't want to ever learn, right? If you just want to be someone who memorizes points and can do points, that's that's your route. But if you're someone who wants to eventually get off the app and you're just gonna revert back to eating the same way you were, because most of the time you don't really understand what points are. You Unless you have them memorized, you can't just go into like a new food that you've never tried before and be like, oh, I'm gonna estimate these points because you don't understand how to calculate your own grams for protein, carbs, and fat, okay? And that's something I like to teach because I'm the type of person that likes to know what the heck I'm doing, right? I'm not just doing something because someone told me that this was the best way to do it. I wanna know what's going on. Why am I doing it this way? When you're looking at diets and when you're looking at um, losing weight in general, there are three things that you need to keep in mind. And this is the reason why most people fail. One, it has to be something that will last a long time. Like it's long-term success. It's sustainable. It's something that you are able to handle when situations like come up, right? You're able to bounce back really quickly when life throws you a curveball because it's easy to do and it, you can do it from anywhere, okay? So sustainability is the, the number one thing. Number two, it needs to be enjoyable. If you don't enjoy what you're eating, and you constantly feel like you're depriving yourself of the good things that you want to eat or you're constantly hungry, it's not, it's not going to work because you're not enjoying what you're eating. And they tend to like promote like you can eat whatever you want kind of thing. You can use your points for any, anything that you want to use them for. And that's similar to macros. So I'll give them that. That's a good thing. But sometimes I did realize that when I had only 23 points, I was struggling because I would be really, really hungry. And I would know that the, the most like filling thing I could eat on my points would be a salad. The only issue I have with eating a lot of vegetables all the time is we all know we should be eating it, but it's not something that we all enjoy. And if it's something you don't enjoy, you're not going to do as much of it. And a lot of people think that the key to getting healthy is eating broccoli and chicken every day or just eating salads for lunch every day. And then most of the time they don't, they don't stick with it. So I like to teach people very convenient, easy foods that aren't salads that are going to fill you up because I understand, like I wouldn't want to eat salads every single day of my life either, especially if you're new and you don't eat vegetables that often and then you try to switch to it, it's just making a really, really big change for no reason. And number three, 
the important thing is not only from a place of like you're enjoying your food, but also mentally you feel like you are in control of your food. You're not self-sabotaging, you're not emotionally eating, you're not binging or um, starving. And that is a, the mental health aspect of food and the, the bad relationships that we have formed over years is the most detrimental thing to our success, the most. So the issue that I have with Weight Watchers is because of the way their business is structured, for people who are going in and they're new to nutrition and losing weight, it can be very, very tough for them to feel like they're, they're able to do this on their own because they kind of keep you hooked into it. It's almost like you're like dependent on the system. And if you want to get off of it, it's really, really hard because you don't know what these points mean. You would have to, at that point, if you're like, all right, I'm gonna get off this, but how am I gonna be able to keep these points up? You're probably gonna start doing points on your own and trying to mimic what you did. But let's say you eat something new that you never ate before and you don't know the points of it because they're not like in, in your memory because you haven't memorized it. What are you gonna do then? It's a little tougher at that point. You have to, if you want to at that point when you decide to get off of Weight Watchers, if you wanna go through all of that calculation and just like start learning about macros, you can a lot of people don't want to take the effort to learn it on their own and that's why hiring someone like a coach who is going to help you with both the fitness side and the mental health and the nutrition and all of that together to teach you how to do it on your own like i do is extremely important because you don't want to feel like you're dependent on some computer system what if weight watchers just disappears one day how are you going to manage, right? If everything that you are doing every day is tied to a number, tied to a point. It's just, to me, that's the part that kind of throws me a little bit. On the good side of it though, I do appreciate that these days, Weight Watchers has um, like fitness. They didn't have that back when I did it, which I thought was pretty cool. And then they also have like some wellness and like mental health and like meditation on the app, like quick five minute meditations. I was like, okay, I can, I can get down with that. I appreciate that. Now, Weight Watchers itself is not an expensive product. It's something that's reasonable for most people. When you talk about having a coach, yes, I understand that you are looking at like hundreds of dollars difference in what you're spending. And a lot of people who do Weight Watchers do it for the affordability and the convenience. And it's very simple to use. I get that. And if that's something you need, that's fine. But if you are someone who struggles with emotional eating, if you're someone who is completely clueless about nutrition and jumps from diet to diet to diet, you, you should try to do something different this time, right? Stop jumping from diet to diet because to tell you the complete truth, diets work in the same way. Every single diet, if you say that you've tried it and it works, when someone tells me that they've done keto, it works. Weight Watchers, it works. Atkins, it works. Zone, it works. The reason why is because of a calorie deficit. It has nothing to do with the stuff that you're like calculating or re removing from your food. It all has to do with how much you're eating. And when you focus on it, when your attention goes to tracking your food and removing food, it's all because you're, you're focused on that specific task for a long period of time and you're able to have more success with it. Same with budgeting. If you, if you don't, if you stop looking at your credit cards and your bank statements and you're just like, let's say you take six months and just kind of do whatever, chances are you may overspend, right? But if you are looking at your uh, bank statements every single day, logging in, looking at how much you spent in every category, making sure you have limits on your day on how much you're able to spend in every single category, you will stay on track. That's just how life works in every, like everything. Business too, if you focus on your business or your work and you focus on a specific project, you'll have a lot more success on it on a product productivity standpoint than if you just were to just freestyle and just do whatever. And that's why every single diet works in some capacity. It's not going to work if you eat more than you should. And the key is what you should eat is different for every single person based on genetics, based on activity levels. 
and you need to have someone who's going to give you something personalized to teach you how to eat for your body type. And I will say this over and over and over again, when someone is vegan or vegetarian or dairy-free, gluten-free, I want you to look at it as a, like, from like a doctor standpoint, from a medical standpoint, why are you this way, right? Why are you choosing to eat this certain way and have this lifestyle? Because if a doctor tells you, you have celiac disease, go ahead and be gluten-free. If you heard somewhere online or had some social media influencer tell you that they cut dairy and lost 20 pounds and that's what you're gonna do, I would say that's like falling into negative territory and I really, really want you to stop doing that because that's where the yo-yo dieting comes into play. That's when you start having negative relationships with items, like food items and food groups because you start associating dairy with really, really negative stuff. I remember when Khloe Kardashian lost all that weight and everyone online, I kept seeing all kinds of articles and videos about it and she was like, oh, I stopped eating dairy and it helped me lose all this weight. That could just be she was cutting out a lot of calories, a lot of fat that she was eating. It had probably nothing to do with the dairy. Yes, dairy can cause a lot of inflammation. I understand that, so don't, don't come at me in the comments about how inflammation and all the ways that dairy causes your gut health and, okay, I get it. <laughs> That's not what I'm going with here. I'm just saying from a standpoint of like, if you like dairy, if you like cheese, and your body feels fine on cheese, but you feel like you have to cut it out because it's a bad food, don't do it. Don't do it. I eat cheese, I ate cheese, and I still lost weight. So it can be done. That's all I'm saying, that's all I'm saying. Don't come at me, please. <laughs> okay, so again, there are some good things and some bad things about uh, Weight Watchers, and I'm not gonna lie. For some people, Weight Watchers could be a good thing but if you're looking for long lasting changes, something that's sustainable, something that's going to help your mental health and cause you to heal from your emotional eating and your self-sabotage and your trauma with food, and if it's something that is not enjoyable to you and you struggle to eat vegetables, um, like a lot of vegetables, it could be kind of a, an issue for you, okay? So that's all I'm saying. If you have any thoughts or if you can tell me all about this whole point system and how it converts to calories, because I am still tripping over the fact that I saw 1200 calories was like 32 points. I was like, that's that's a lot of points for what I see people doing, like 23 points. Like anyway, if you have any thoughts about that, leave them in the comments below. Again, this is just my opinion and how I help, like to teach my clients. Um, and I want to try to share my knowledge with you guys, especially since dieting is such a sore topic to go over. People get very, very sensitive about their dieting tactics that they use. And I don't want to dog any of them, but I want you guys to look at a couple of things when you are making your decisions on dieting. Um, because dieting can be really, really tough and it's going to mess you up mentally if you're not doing it the right way. All right. So I love you guys. Thank you so much for sticking around and I will see you in the next video.